Katie Ford BMG HOA Ham. Bob, now really, is that lower sideband 40 meter signal really coming out of this tiny Redicus TR110? Now, let's not get carried away. This is not a replacement for your IC7300 or any of your higher end radios that have more space to put more sophisticated electronic components in there. But that's pretty impressive for such a tiny little radio. And you can see I was off frequency on my IC7300 so I could tune it in just to prove to you I wasn't playing games. You wanna get a little bit better reception from the tiny antenna on the top of this, then get yourself an adapter off of Amazon or your favorite radio store and attach any external antenna you want to this TR110. Redivis did send me this Redicus radio for my testing and review, and I want to say thanks to them. Be careful when you pull the radio out. The antenna is behind this protective foam, so don't let it catch when you remove the radio. Pull it out of its plastic bag and then just grab the rest of the components on the bottom of the box. We have our super secret FBI earpiece in here. A really nice carry pouch to protect the radio um, when you're going portable with it. A user manual in tiny written text that you'll need your bifocals or a magnifying glass for in five different languages. A lanyard USB cable and then of course the battery to go into the back of this. This can be operated without that internal battery or once it's dead. I'll show you how to use an external battery here in just a couple of moments. We'll talk through some of the basic functionality of this and then the use case. Who is this for? Who would benefit from having something like this and are you interested in it? Right here you're seeing probably the weakest point of the radio. This antenna at the very top of it, it is fragile. Now, it didn't give me any trouble taking it out and putting it back in, but I would want to be really careful when I had this extended because it could be a breaking point of this piece of gear. And we'll talk about some options you could have to substitute or compensate for that aerial concern. So why might you be interested in this radio and who is it for? You might be interested alone for its diminutive size. It truly is just a pocket receiver. It's lightweight, it fits in your shirt pocket. So it's easy to take with you work, vacation, some serious event you're going to, some pleasure event you're going to. And with that super secret earpiece, you can listen to one thing while you're focusing on something else. It truly is an incredible form factor. You sacrifice something for for that let's just be realistic the receive capability on this wouldn't be as sophisticated and capable as a larger unit that has more room for more components of a more sophisticated nature so understand what you're getting here and that is not a criticism in any way shape or form it's pretty impressive on how it can receive for its size if you're a beginner, you're going to have to spend some time in this manual. It is small print and there's a lot in there. And because of the form factor here, which is the draw, many of the buttons serve multiple purposes. So you're going to have to spend some time understanding how this works. It's not a drawback, it's a reality of small form factor. If you're an expert user, you're quickly going to pick up the use of this and the manual won't be a challenge for you in understanding the various features. Regarding that broad coverage, well, let's go ahead and bring it up on the screen. It's rather amazing what this tiny little radio can do from FM, AM, shortwave, CB, airband. We'll talk about airband here in a couple of minutes. UHF, VHF, it's rather unbelievable everything that it can pick up. Weather stations, NOAA, weather band for those here in the USA. So let me just go ahead and show you real quickly how easily it receives AM, FM, and then we'll pull up the weather station stations so you can hear that and then I'll pull in a brief clip of the receive for airband stations a percent of the purchase price putting the house within his financial reach setting up this fund was a priority for mayor okay Thursday, east winds 5 to 10 knots. Bay and inland waters light. 
lights off. Turbojet arrivals expect runway when left for noise abatement. Notice two air missions. Taxiway Kilo. Taxiway Victor 2 and Taxiway Victor between Victor 2 and Victor 3 restricted to wingspan 171 feet or less. I have mentioned that the top of this antenna could be a little bit fragile. It'll be fine if you're just careful with it, but you could snap it if you're not paying attention. So what options do you have? Well, you've already seen me plug this into an external antenna here at the shack. And another option that you have is to get something like this C-Crane shortwave reel antenna. And it has a metal connector here on the inside and you clamp that over top of the antenna and then unwind this. This is the antenna. You have many feet of antenna wire here. This becomes the antenna and then you can clip this on to a curtain or some other stationary object several feet away from the radio and now you have a wire antenna system. I did see on Amazon that some are now manufacturing this type of antenna with this type of fitting which would go right into the top of the Redicus unit so I'll leave a link for that below. I haven't used them before they do have a good rating on Amazon and if I were buying this today that's what I would get as opposed to this because I have the ability to put an external antenna here. So the next thing we need to do is wait for this battery to completely die so I can show you how to utilize this once you have a totally drained battery. So we've completely run the power down to our TR110. I'm going to show you that we can get power into it with the battery removed. It doesn't do us a lot of good. It turns on the light, it gives us a clock. And it pretends it's charging, but of course, because there's no battery in there, it's not going to be useful. We also can't get the radio to turn on. No receiving when it's in this condition. So I'm not sure that does us a whole lot of good. And oh, by the way, I'm a huge fan of Anchor power stations, power banks, batteries. But Anchor doesn't pay any attention to ham radio operators. So if there's any product manager from Anchor that ever stumbles into this video, we want 13.8 volts out of this stuff, guys. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff or all kinds of equipment out there. Please start paying attention to ham radio operators. You wouldn't believe how many batteries you would sell. Well, let's just go ahead and put the battery back into the unit. Make sure that it is aligned correctly. And you're going to see that it immediately starts a charge. So let's see what happens when we try to power on. Nothing. For some reason, it doesn't like to power on with the battery connected. So let it sit here and charge for 30, 60 seconds, disconnect the battery. Turn it on. All right, let's turn the volume down. So now it's working. Just after a couple of seconds of charge, it came back to life. And now if you plug this in, it's going to sit here and charge. You can see the charge indicator is moving. So now, theoretically, you can run this as long as you have your battery back up with you, which for most of us is an endless supply because we carry devices like this with us all the time. So what do I like and what do I dislike about the TR110? The manual is just a little bit difficult to read. It's probably more a function of my age and my poor eyesight. So get yourself a young person to read it with you and use the radio with you so you can teach them a thing or two. If you are that younger person, you're not going to have any problem seeing this. Otherwise, get out the magnifying glass and some better readers. There are a lot of features in this radio, so there's a lot of information to cover, and that's why the manual is as long as it is. If it were bigger so I could see it better, I would have been annoyed that they used all that paper to talk about a tiny radio. So the size of the manual actually fits well with the radio. I just struggle to read it. That really isn't the fault of Redicus. That antenna is a bit fragile at the very top. Now, I was careful with mine. I did not have any issue whatsoever. And if you're careful with yours, you should be just fine. I don't know how they could have done anything different and stay in this small form factor. So it just seems like an engineering challenge that would be difficult to overcome. Get yourself an external 
Ariel, just like I showed, they're readily available on Amazon. And again, I'll leave a link to that in the description below, as well as a link to the radio itself. I would have loved to seen a metal case rather than polymer, and now I'm really dating myself, aren't I? Nothing comes in metal cases anymore, it's all polymer. If any of you out there know about a radio in this size, this form factor in a metal case, let me know. Or for that matter, if you know of any radio this size to fit in your pocket that is as full featured as this, let me know. I'd love to get my hands on it. I'm not aware of one. I think it's a pretty good value. If you are new to radio and listening, this would give you a lot of opportunity to get introduced into the hobby at a low cost. And from there, you could invest in radios that cost hundreds or thousands of dollars compared to something here that'll set you back less than $100. I hope you found this useful. I've enjoyed doing this video on this particular tiny receiver. It's quite a marvel. Talk to you soon, friend. 73.